Hello everyone, I am Randy Suarez, aka Silver Crow, today back here with another reaction. This time we're back to, with some more Sunny V2, the saddest moment in YouTube history. And, um, it, it's, been, it's been a lot of them. And, uh, <clears throat> I'm trying not to cry on this on this one, so yeah. Um, yeah, but there are, there's a lot of sad moments, and if it gets to the point that I need to explain my own personal sad moment, I gladly, I gladly will. Um, but anyway, but you're not here to hear me talk about my sad moments I talk about the YouTube saddest moment in history so uh <clears throat> if you like any other content please like comment and subscribe to my channel like comment and subscribe to Sunny V2 I will leave the original link to this video down below so watch it uninterrupted also link to my Twitter Instagram and TikTok follow me on those social platforms I'll link to my cash I feel gracious enough to donate wherever you want to donate that's fine if you don't that's fine as well same thing with the super thanks but if you but by donating liking commenting and subscribing and sharing Hey, let me know y'all rock with the reaction content, rock with the channel, and rock with your boy. But further ado, buckle up and let's get started. Alright, we're back here with some more Sunday V2, the saddest moment in YouTube history. The saddest moments, to be honest. But, uh, but here we go. From Jake Paul to Joe Rogan, these are YouTube's saddest moments, with Linus Tech Tips starting our list with this iconic live stream. He was supposed to be celebrating 10 million subs, yet Linus began the stream with a pretty somber tone. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know how it all happened. I've got this following of literally 10 million, um, and it kind of feels like luck sometimes. I'm probably more like you guys than you realize. He'd talk about the pressure his work put on his family. I mean, every time my wife would ask me how long do we need to keep doing these kinds of hours like how long do we need to keep pushing like this before we can just back off and like have a life i started with hey look i'm gonna slow down when we have kids and i said hey thanks for basically soloing our first kid tell you what i'll slow down when we have a second one and then i said i'd slow down when they're old enough to remember that daddy was always working and then i said i'd slow down when they got to the age where they really need parent involvement to you know, help them with their homework or their sports club or whatever else with a story about make-a-wish then bringing linus to tears i had a pretty life-changing experience a little while ago the kid in question was too sick to travel and they asked if i could record a personalized video for him so i picked up my phone i pointed it at myself and i just tried to think of something to say and i couldn't and i looked at their guidelines and it had it had just the most useless stuff in it it was like be upbeat and don't talk about death and i was just like this kid's 12 He's to like die of leukemia. <laughs> what? Last thing I can do right now is be upbeat. The only thought going through my head is like, everyone and everything I know is gonna die. All I could see in the photo album was my kids. The whole thing made me question why I'm doing this. Ironically, the thumbnail became a viral meme, leading to comments such as, came for the memes left with emotions, I'm not crying, I'm just water cooling my <coughs> eyes, and where men cried. Nine, Bradley Ma- mm. And it's the reason why I do take breaks when it comes to doing this, doing YouTube and anything, because I do have a life beyond this. Technically, I did, I started doing this out of chance, and I'm nearly to three, 3K subscribers, which is not much of a big deal, but it's a big deal to me because it shows that, one, I have a, somewhat of a loyal fan base, two, that, yeah, I really enjoy watching and reacting to my content, and, but... People forget people have lives, you know. Like, I took a break, a week break, because I was sick, you know. Yeah, shorts were still going out because I because I was to, I was told, like, regardless, still stay, uh, <clears throat> what's the word for it? Consistent. All the time, I definitely wasn't consistent when I was dealing with the hurricane. But, <clears throat> but as soon as I did my videos, I went straight back to bed, you know. Because, again, I was sick. And the last thing I want to do is stress out my body enough just to crank out videos every day on the day. And and people could do that. Bless their heart. They could do that. But they have families. It, it becomes difficult. Brad lost his dad at the age of only six, which is understandably something he struggles to talk about. That's the thing, you know, when I think about my dad. Although the saddest example was during his podcast with Tyler Perry. I don't want to cry. But why would you, why would you even hold it? How it feels, you should let it out. Don't do that, man. Let it out how it comes.
Brad was thanking Tyler for some advice he'd given earlier. People get so caught up in where they're at and in the moment of like the negative and the darkness and the evil and they, they, don't, they don't see the light. It wasn't as simple as what I thought it was then, which was my father didn't love me. Yeah. I'm not good enough. Yeah. And uh, I built up so many walls and, and who I was. It's, it's crazy looking back now how much it affected even my personal relationships, my, my, my intimate relationships, my relationships with my family, friends, everything. And was able to end the moment with an excellent silver lining. Everything that we go through, every hardship, every, every downfall is is going to be a new opportunity to learn and to grow and to become better. Hey, Joe Rogan. On episode 1123 of the Joe Rogan Experience, he and Kevin Smith were talking about their pets when Joe passively mentioned he saw a veterinarian cry. He's the only vet I've ever had um, cry with me. Over what animal? I had a puppy that had distemper. Ah, oh, man, the puppy just after like a couple of days of being at the house would have these seizures, like violent seizures. And then towards the end, it was having them all day long. As a result of the dog's condition, it had to be put down. Mm, I held the dog, I placed him down, I gave him a kiss, I said goodbye. Mm. And he put the needle in the dog and, and put the dog to sleep. Then we both went outside, man. He was just crying, just weeping. He was killed by a drunk driver. The vet was? Yeah, that was a, that was a rough one. I got a, an email, uh, I believe, from his daughter. Super good dude, man. Leading Kevin to share a similar story. It's such a weird relationship where one day you're like, I love you to death and I love you so much I have to kill you. And that last fucking hour was like probably hands down the most difficult hour of my life, man, because we all knew what was coming. And you're programmed to to stop that at all costs you program to keep people around keep yourself around seven loaf as a youtube it's one of those things that um i lost a friend that was that i worked with um at my job you know we were friends uh we were work uh, we were just work associates at first before we became friends and this person did a lot for me when it comes to being peaceful with myself um but learning her pa about her passing, you know, after the last time I talked to her was on her birthday, wishing her a, a birthday because her birthday is literally the day before mine. So, yeah, I'm going to remember whether I like it or not. And I wish her a birthday, see how she's doing today, yada. And when I texted her and called her Merry Christmas, telling her Merry Christmas and everything on literally on Christmas Day, she never responded to me like that. But I didn't get, I didn't get no response, like zero. And when I found out that she passed, um, my heart broke. Because, you know, I knew it was planning, it was going to happen. I didn't expect it to happen right then, you know. I mean, that's, but that's, we don't expect that. But still, though, that's, man. Prankster, it seemed as though Loaf was always having fun. So when he'd post a video titled YouTube Saved My Life with a depressing thumbnail and the following intro. Failure, loser, and loner are the three words that I would use to describe myself. It seemed the audience was in for something different. Loaf began by stating he had a tough time growing up. High school was a hard time for me. I was really insecure. I was really unsure of myself. I got bullied pretty bad. And thought that starting YouTube would help to keep him safe. If I can make them laugh, like, then they're not gonna hurt me. However, Loaf struggled to find success. For a while, it was just terrible like nothing was happening i would be embarrassed when people would ask me what i did even feeling like a failure in the presence of his parents like my parents have never understood like the youtube thing that's probably like the hardest part because it's just like every kid every kid wants to make their parents proud mm -hmm. you know what i mean since then however loaf has found massive success recently announcing he was able to buy a house and i was able to buy it 100 percent with cash which was also a big goal of mine six syndicate similar to linus syndicate was part of the make-a-wish program being chosen by a kid named alec for them to spend a day together this resulted in a video titled making his wish come true in which they flew in a helicopter and became extremely close <laughs> Give me a high five. Did you enjoy the helicopter ride then? Syndicate inspired Alec to open his own channel. Hi everybody. Uh, thank you so much for over 200 subscribers already. That's 
pretty crazy. However, just 43 days later, Syndicate made a tragic announcement. He gave me permission to be able to let you guys know that, unfortunately, he did, he did, he did lose his battle. And you know, now he's in a better place because he really wasn't in a good spot. So, like, thank you so much. Five, Kai Sanat. Kai was trying to become mm. Twitch's most subscribed streamer, setting a goal of 80,000 to overtake XQC. Mm. When he'd reached the milestone in late 2022, he almost couldn't handle it. 80,000 is crazy. No, 80,000 is crazy. But getting a supportive call from his mum sent mm. Kai over the edge. What am I, ma, ma calling me? Congratulations, son. Thank you. You're number one. And, and we, we watching and we're so proud of you, everybody. Babe, I love you so much. Babe, I'm so proud of you. You're number one. And you my son. And I'm so happy to be your mom. And I just want to let the world know that you've been working hard like this. You number one and you my son, and I'm proud to be your mum. Man, straight tears right there. Mm -hmm. For Matthew Santoro, Nicole Arbor was his girlfriend, and they seemed like a healthy YouTube couple. However, four months after separating, Matthew uploaded a video titled My Abuse Story. It's not not something people ever talk about, but I feel compelled to because I was in an abusive relationship. He began by explaining that Nicole was very controlling. This individual that I was with was extremely jealous. I had to cut every female out of my life out of social media, delete every number out of my phone, before adding he'd been hit by her in the middle of an argument. This person prevented me from leaving their home and said, you're not going anywhere, at which point I was hit in the face. This caused Matthew to break down crying. And it's something that men never talk talk about because we're made to believe that we're supposed to be strong mm -hmm. and, I, and I never talked about it because I thought that no one would believe me no one would which is sad really it's even bad now due to the fact that a lot of people don't believe that still men don't get abused you know it does happen it is common but it's not common enough to the point that it can overtake women getting abused and everything and to me personally it's never about that abuse is abuse it doesn't matter what gender you are It was shit. Leading to one of the saddest videos ever uploaded to YouTube. There's people that love you and you don't need to be in that relationship. You don't need to be with someone that hates you and, and uses you and manipulates you to do everything that they want. 3. Jake Paul. In late 2019, Jake announced he was basically quitting YouTube to train for a boxing match he'd scheduled against Anderson Gibb. The fight became his sole focus for almost half a year and while he would eventually win, Jake revealed on Logan's podcast his life felt meaningless after. Like, I win the fight, right? That was my sole focus and purpose. All of a sudden, I get back to LA. I'm by myself, like, sitting in the fucking room, and I'm like, what, like, what do I do? In addition to feeling directionless, Jake explained he was dealing with four different lawsuits. And then I wake up the next day, have a, uh, a phone call, like, with my lawyers for one of the lawsuits for literally like like something I did not do. And it goes back to like people just like attacking Jake Paul and like wanting to see me fail for literally like fucking nothing. Like the What is go what's what's wrong with these people? How can you basically attack someone like Jake Paul? And when he retaliates, you want to sue them for something that you did. That makes zero sense to do. Like, y'all don't have nothing better to do? Suing me for something I didn't do. Like, on God. And then... You could take a break, take a break. Yeah, take, take a breather. Take a breather. Take a breather. We, we can sit for a second. Which consumed not only his life, but his family's as well. My mom is like spending hours of yep. her day when she, she's retired. She's in Hawaii. And they're like, yo, your son has to pay this. Like, it just like so stupid. To Dan TDM. Dan's dog Ellie was a staple in his videos ever since he got her back in 2013. She helped Dan film reaction videos, fashion shows, and even Minecraft mm. content, stealing the hearts of up to 30 million viewers. So when he'd upload
upload a video titled Goodbye Ellie, Dan and his audience were totally devastated. Yesterday, unfortunately, Ellie died. It explained exactly how Ellie passed. Stings even more because she went in for an infected tooth. So she had to go in for an operation and you just didn't wake up. Just before we got the phone call that happened, we were already planning like how we were going to work out picking her up when she, um, when our operation is finished. And then you just get hit with that. Calling the loss one of his most difficult challenges. I know it's a dog, but for us, it's like a, it's a member of our family and I'm very lucky. I haven't had a lot of loss in my life. So this is probably the one that's been the hardest. Like my heart literally hurts. One, Theo Vaughn and Sean Strickland. There's been many a sad moment on Theo Vaughn's podcast. Mm. Oh yeah, dude. We cry on here every week. Sorry, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. Sorry. Yet few compare to episode number 476. Theo and Sean began discussing their childhoods. I used to always sleep in my mom's room because I thought my dad was going to kill my mom. So, like, I would, like, sleep by the door. I'd sleep to under... To make sure she was all right? Yeah, I'd sleep, uh -huh. under... I'd sleep under the bed, you know? I'd sleep by the door. Yet Sean couldn't finish his story as it was simply too traumatic. I remember when I stopped believing in God, man. Like, like I had fucking, um... Yeah, it's crazy shit, dude. Yeah, I'm sorry, bud. So, ah, oh, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. That's all good, dude. Yeah. It's one of those things that, when it comes to stuff like that, I, I relate to because I was put in a situation that no child should be put in. And it's with an abusive parent who pretends that she's not abusive. But the point that she thinks it's the same, but she's and the thing is, I found out years later, yeah, she has her, she had her own trauma, but it does not give her excuse to do what she did to me and to her own daughters. And this is, yeah, it's about my stepmom, but it's one of those things that when I explain the full story, and a lot of people are like, oh, why your dad didn't do this, why your dad didn't do that. Just like when anyone who's in love, they rose tinted glasses, they didn't see that. And they did see it, they ignored it. Or, or it's a lot of things that, yeah, it went wrong. And things shouldn't have been how it was, but it is what it is because at the end of the day, I, how people, I explain it, I explain it to people like this too. If I didn't have the right people who came back later in my life, I will not be here. I will not. It's due to the fact that what a lot of people don't understand is you don't leave physical scars, at least mental and emotional ones that sometimes does not go away. And when they do go away, it just leaves those scars. It's always a remember. It's always a remembrance. And it sucks, you know. It's like reason why I have a beer from time most of the time because I literally have a scar that she caused on my face. And there's a reason why when it comes to Christmas time, I can't get in the joy of Christmas time. Because she took that joy away. And I was scared for for the longest time, you know. I was very much afraid, afraid of everyone, because you know, person who wanted to be, who wants friends more than anything, I couldn't have friends because I was afraid. We don't have to talk, man. I can just sit here with you for a minute. <laughs> We can just sit here. We can just nah, sit here. Nah, it's all good. You take a second. Just process it. Leading Theo to comfort him by offering his own story. And yeah, I remember being so scared when I was a kid. Like I was saying, like I remember hearing that like animal pee to yeah. another animal wouldn't come. So I would stand up at, on my bed at night and I would pee around my bed in a circle because I was afraid that things were gonna get me. Shit, who were you afraid? Like any particular? Just everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was just afraid of everything. Yeah, I know how Theo feels when it comes to that, but. Sorry if that kind of got down. Um, I apologize, but yeah. It's something that... I moved past it, but I still remember it like it's clear as day. That's, that's the weird part.
everyone deserve to go through shit like that, man? Come on. <sighs> Again, I'm sorry, everybody, but damn. Damn. Oh. I'm sorry, everybody. I normally don't cry on camera, but damn. I should have known by reacting to this video that shit gonna unlock some. Unlock, relock, well, un re unlock some of the memories. Damn. But that's the end of the video. I'm, again, I'm sorry, man. Like I said, no one should ever go through shit like that that makes them question themselves. But we all do. We all go through it. It just sucks. It really does. But. <laughs> sorry, y'all saw me cry and everything. I apologize, but. That's the end of the video. So, y'all like any of this content, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Like, comment, and subscribe too. <clears throat> Sunny V2, I will leave the original link to this video down below so you can watch it uninterrupted. Also, link to my Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Follow me on those social platforms. And uh, to next time, please take care of yourself. Stay hydrated. Stay safe. Stay warm. Peace out. Little questions is everything they know about you.